East Windsor is one of the prime neighborhood in Windsor, Ontario and in this video we will be going over a few details what makes East Windsor a unique place either for investing or for moving in. Namaskar, Adabarse, Vanakkam, what's up everyone? Hope you guys doing great. If you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification for an awesome content regarding real estate, Windsor, Ontario, and many other financial related stuff. And also my personal journey as an investor and realtor and many other stuff. If you've been following me, if you like my content, you know what I'm gonna ask you do me a favor hit that thumbs up button because if you don't hit it then youtube doesn't like to you know spread my videos for potential people who are looking for this content and again as i said in this video we'll go over east windsor more details but i'm not gonna go by myself i have clark from my team who is uh, born and raised in windsor who knows a lot about this neighborhood he will be sharing all the information Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Clark Alley, an investment realtor from the Wind City team, as well as Windsor's first tiny home developer. Today I'm gonna to dive into East Windsor slash Riverside area of Windsor, Essex. Um, it's a nice neighborhood, you know, great area to raise a family, as well as to live, you know, in a nicer, um, higher end part of Windsor. I'm gonna dive into the main reasons why I think Riverside is a great area to live. So one of the first reasons why I think Riverside or East Windsor is a great area to live is because there's a lot of great activities to do out Side. Um, for example, like the Ganacho Trail, um, a little more, you know, east east side of East Windsor and Riverside. Um, it's a long trail, you know, great for hikes, great for walks, take, great to take a bike out. Um, there's even some trails where you can actually take your skateboard and kind of go along, you know, nice paved trails. It's just a nice area that you don't get in a whole lot of other cities where there's just so much activity you can actually go along the trail. And, you know, at the front of the trail, closer to the Riverside area, um, a bit more west of there is actually the Peace Fountain. So, you know, there's every so often there's like main events going on out there, um, great for picnics, great for, you know, hanging out on the weekend and the evenings. Um, it's just a nice, relaxing area to kind of spend time with the family, maybe go on your first date. Um, it's just a great area to, to you know, hang out um, kind of around in the East Riverside area. Now, another great great for you know recreational activities um, you know maybe after COVID um, would be to hang out at the WFCU Center. Um, I myself actually rent out the volleyball courts on the weekends um, you know play volleyball with my friends um, there's a lot of hockey events that go on there sometimes there's you know concerts and stuff like that but it's a, it's a great large recreational center um, that, you know really really kind of ties all of the East Windsor um, some parts of the company as well together to, uh, to kind of go for you know go on the weekends and evening events as well. And then another thing that is really nice about the area is this is more in the summertime. Um, you can actually take a ferry or kayak over to Pesh Island and, you know, experience the island kind of right in between Detroit and Windsor there. Um, it's a great area. You know, if you haven't been before, highly recommend taking the ferry, taking a kayak over. You can't actually bring a boat over. Um, you have to either take the ferry or kayak, but uh, it's a great area to go exploring and, uh, you know, something that not a lot of, you know, not a lot of Windsorites know about, but uh, highly recommend that as well. In terms of the schools in the neighborhood, uh, one of the great, greatest schools in there is uh, the David Suzuki School. So David Suzuki was an environmental activist, um, kind of across Canada. You know, he had his own like broadband television show at one point. Um, he's a great, you know, he's a huge activist for environmental safety concerns and you know the future, the future of our environment. So that school, um, actually, the architect that worked on our tiny home, he also worked on that structure uh, in in the Riverside area. So that school itself, you know, it has a lot of solar panels. Um, there's actually a green space at the top. They really built that school um, kind of in honor of David Suzuki himself. Um, you know, they got a bunch of grants from, I think, provincially um, as well as federally as well to just make the school, um, you know, as net zero and environmentally friendly as possible. So when you go inside the school, you can really, you know, firsthand, you can kind of see um, how modern and how technological advanced it is from other schools uh, in Windsor or, you know, even most of uh, southwestern Ontario. Another great thing about Riverside is the condos. I mean, downtown Windsor has its own condos, but, uh, you know, Glen Garda, Westchester on the Lake, these are two of, you know, Windsor's finest condos that you'll only see in the Riverside area. Glen Garda, you know, is renounced for, you know, a lot of retirees or wealthy people will kind of rent the uh, the top floors there just because, you know, it is so extravagant and uh, kind of calming compared to, you know, the busyness of downtown Windsor. You know, you get that, you know, luxury feel of a condo while in, you know, the quieter part of Windsor-Essex. 
Now, if you're looking at it from, uh, from an investor point of view, as I'm sure uh, most people in this YouTube are, the investor point of view is basically you're looking at this from, again, more of a single family home kind of renting on a one-to-one -one family basis. Um, you know, it's much better. There's not that many multifamilies in the area. It's much better for, you know, about long-term renting to a family. Maybe the family is going to David Suzuki School, is going to Riverside High School. Um, it's really for that longer-term investment. Uh, so similar, similar price point to Walkerville, um, you're going to see you know, maybe the single family homes are a little more, anywhere from maybe 300 to 400,000, you know, and then if you purchase a property maybe a little bit below that, obviously value add opportunities, just fix and flips, burrs, in-law suites, kind of the like, you can really, you know, turn some properties, turn some properties around, kind of match the higher echelon that uh, Riverside and East Windsor has to offer. So, you know, in terms of rents, let's assume a three bedroom, two bath property, uh, kind of detached single family home. Um, you'd probably rent that, again, anywhere from maybe 1500 to two grand, uh, kind of around that space. And, uh, you know, the returns you're gonna get is, you know, is, is great. Um, you'll get some maybe 400 to 500 cash flow, as well as, you know, kind of be safe at mind knowing that your tenant is caring and respectful to the property, just as if, you know, a regular homeowner were to live in that property. So for the investor that's looking for, I guess, maybe something a little cheaper, you still want to be in the East Windsor and Riverside area, um, but you don't you know, want to pay for that high price point of those single family homes. Um, there's actually a nice area of the, of, the, of the East Windsor Riverside called Little River Acres. It's a section of the area that, you know, is roughly the same kind of structure of housing. Um, there's kind of two different models. Uh, the basic model is kind of, the, you know, the two story, kind of larger bedroom, larger bathroom property, uh, not much parking on the street itself. The home's a little kind of tightly knit together. Um, most of it is electric you know there's some kind of gas kind of being brought in these properties uh, but most of it is re relatively relative to the same properties um, you can probably pick these up anywhere from you know maybe 175 to 200 a little bit over 200 um, and still you know three bedroom maybe one or two bath and still offer returns that you would expect from Windsor um, you know, so this is great for investment purposes. You can purchase these properties up, rent them out to, again, nicer single families um, to rent out kind of the full property and still get, you know, larger cash flows um, from, you know, a property that's still, that's still in a great neighborhood. Um, so I definitely, you know, I definitely recommend checking out, checking out the villages, a uh, little over acres. You know, it's a nice little pocket inside the East River, you know, East Windsor and Riverside area. Um, that's great, great for investment purposes. So in terms of developments in the area, um, there's not, you know, there's not much, you know, crazy development, uh, you know, in terms of like big multifamily buildings, um, except near the WFCU Center. Um, there's a large acreage of land that Shmuel Fari, um, owner of, you know, Fari Holdings Group, he owns an insane amount of acreages in London. Um, he's a big developer in London as well as Windsor, but he is actually just pulled the trigger and moving forward on a $250 million development right around the WFCU Center. Um, this is gonna bring in close to a thousand residential units um, you know, in terms of single family homes, some apartments, I think some few condos going in there as well. But with that much development and that much money being plowed into the area, you know that just, it's a rippling effect. Real estate is the biggest rippling effect you can have on, you know, on an economy. Um, with that much construction going into there, with that much development, with that much money, um, you know it's gonna ripple around the area, and, you know, bring more densification to the neighborhood, um, more people moving in, this means more jobs, this means more, you know, money flowing from the city. This is a huge, huge project, um, probably one of the, largest development projects that uh, the Windsor has seen, you know, aside from the Gordie Hell Bridge, um, the Windsor Mega Hospital. This development, you know, is definitely up there for larger developments going on in the, uh, the Windsor area.